E1 is a common mechanism of elimination when base is absent or only weak base is present. Like SN1, it is a stepwise process in which ionization of the substrate or loss of the leaving group to form a carbocation is the slow, rate-limiting step. In fact, it's the exact same step as the first step of SN1. Subsequent removal of an alpha proton by the leaving group leads to an alkene product and HY. Because the reaction forms a cationic intermediate, tertiary electrophiles or electrophiles that can form resonance stabilized cations are necessary. The reaction will not take place unless the electrophile can form a stable cation. The absence of strong base means that E1 reactions usually need another kind of driving force. This is most commonly provided in the form of heat, which encourages the breakdown of the substrate into two molecules, the alkene product and the acid of the leaving group, HY. E1 reactions are governed by the same selectivity rules as E2 reactions. More substituted trans double bonds are formed in preference to less substituted cis double bonds. I won't spend too much time on this since we've seen it previously, but keep in mind that E1 reactions form stable double bonds just like E2 reactions. When a poor leaving group is present on the substrate, deprotonation must precede loss of the leaving group. Like E2, the E1CB mechanism, so named because a conjugate base of the substrate forms during the reaction, requires a strong base. However, unlike E2, when the leaving group is poor, deprotonation does not lead to simultaneous loss of the leaving group. Instead, a discrete anionic intermediate is observable, the conjugate base of the substrate. The E1CB mechanism involves deprotonation of the substrate alpha to the leaving group, followed by elimination to form the double bond and kick off the leaving group. Like E2 and E1, the major product of the E1CB reaction often features the most stable double bond. More important to recognize, though, is the resonance stabilization of the anionic intermediate. This stabilization helps explain why deprotonation takes place here instead of at the methyl group.